but it's amazing how like you have touched so many people around the world, not physically, but like in, in such a. Well, an you know, I was single for a while. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, that's gonna get me in trouble. The chains are off the monkey. I'm gonna skip my breaks. I'm gonna make mistakes. I'm gonna skip my breaks. I'm gonna make mistakes. I'm gonna skip my breaks. I'm gonna make mistakes. Look at beautiful stars. I wanna drive a faster car. It was my pleasure to be one of the hosts of the amazing Petrohedonism live show at Nebworth House this past weekend. It was a fantastic event, not only because of the huge array of incredible cars on display, but I got to catch up with my good old friend Richard Rawlings. I met you seven years ago, mate, and yeah. you know you were in a place where you were controlled by every aspect of your life. You know, even from talking to people, it's getting ridiculous. How have you? How, how have you changed? Apart from everyone loves what you're doing as a person now, they're seeing you again. What has changed personally for you? Because you look like a different person, man. You know, I went through a pretty hard time there. Uh, a lot of stress, a lot of restrictions, a lot of chains on me, and, uh, and a lot of rules. And I was trying to get out from under that. Uh, I knew that the, the, what I wanted to do uh, in the car world needed to change from what I was doing on uh, cable, if you will. And uh, when I finally got uh, the opportunity to get away from cable, it was like, uh, like a breath of fresh air, you know? And uh, we're having fun, uh, we're doing well. Uh, I've got a new beautiful lady that uh, I married about a year man. and a half ago. Unbelievable. And, uh, you know, that's changed my attitude a lot. You know, a good girl will take care of uh, everything in life if you let them. And, uh, you know, what we're getting to have fun doing now is really the things that we couldn't show because of the limitation of minutes, um, you know, in one hour. Now we can show every day, every other day, you know, just whatever happens. You know, you know as well as I do when you're chasing cars, working on cars, doing things maybe something happens and it's super cool and the cameras weren't there. Well, now the cameras are with me all the time. The thing is, you're back out there. You're searching, you're opening garage doors, you're pushing 59 caddies out by yourself again. Oh, yeah. And people are loving this, man. People are, people are starting to relive it. And I tell you, you're going to get more views on YouTube just for doing that. And for people at home, because you started from the base, you know, you and Aaron years ago doing what you're doing. You started from the bottom. 2003. He spent eight years trying to build what you did. Just trying to get the show. A policeman, a fireman, like a service worker, and I appreciate for your time served, man. People don't do that in, in the UK, appreciate our veterans and stuff like that, but this guy went out and saved people's lives. He was there as a, you know, helping people out, and we appreciate that. What would you say to people out there, normal people, that aspire to do something as, as simple as modifying a car or going to pull a car out of a barn? What would you tell them, people, man? Just do it. Uh, a lot of people get hooked up in the big dream of buying in uh, too much money, or I gotta have this much shop, or I gotta have this much things before I start my business. You can start a business in a garage, you, you know, a single car garage. That's where Walt Disney started, that's where Amazon started, that's where Apple started, you name it. You know, that's where Gas Monkey started. Uh, you know, so uh, just if it's your passion and you wanna do it, do it. And, you know, as far as business advice, everybody asks me, keep overhead low. Keep it low. You don't need your friends there hanging out. You don't need all that kind of stuff. You don't need friends on the payroll. You need to work and keep your nose to the grindstone until you get to a point that you can have a little fun. We're, we're SEMA, right? We've been going to SEMA since 2015, you and me. We've been, you know, we have a few drinks. We enjoy ourselves. That's what SEMA's about. You Absolutely. work all day and party all night, right? Yes. SEMA's changing. Like, it, honestly, this year I'm supposed to be going there. I've been paid to go there. Same here. And it's looking like... It's falling apart, but that isn't SEMA isn't what it used to be 10 years ago. It's money, 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 right? Yeah, SEMA's not, I mean, somebody's gonna get mad at me for this, but I don't have an agent or a manager or any bosses anymore, so I'm just gonna say it like it is. I hate SEMA in the way that SEMA's become. It's become this big money-making conglomerate, uh, big businesses handling it. And what SEMA used to be was bringing all the artisans and fabricators and, and, and different uh, businesses together to show what was going on in the industry. And now you've got big business that has taken over it and they're spending millions of dollars to have the corner booth or this or that. And most shops, even like, uh, you know, even Gas Monkey today, I can't afford 150, 200,000 bucks for a booth to go hang out, to not be able to sell, to not be able to- To not know, make money. 
you're exactly. not allowed to sell anything at CMAs. Yeah, it, it's, it, and, and just the registration process, just see everything about it. You know what? I'll just go out there and say it. SEMA, you need to rebuild yourself. It is just the way it is. Everybody at, at my level of the industry and below all say the same thing. The only people that you're pleasing are the big money business people, and they're actually pissed off, and that's why SEMA's going to fall apart this year. Jesus, that's going to get me in trouble. But, but Richard, right, <laughs> all they got to do is reach out and listen to constructive criticism from actual the people that represent the community out there. Like, if, if they actually went to Richard and was like, okay, you tell me how to do it, Richard. You've had enough experience to build up from printing napkins, man. You put logos on napkins. I you used came to. up with that stuff. You start from the bottom. This guy knows how the people's people feel. You know, just reach out. Like, he's not saying that... He doesn't want to do it. He's saying you're doing it wrong, and if you need help, we're here, right? I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that I can fix the problem. I'm saying that collectively they should listen uh, to all of us, uh, uh, whether wherever we're coming from in the world, because SEMA is a worldwide event. Uh, they should listen to everybody, and these are the same complaints that have been going on for years and years and years, and uh, we need to turn it back into a cutting edge, what's going on in technology, what's happening, and not a showboatmanship for the ones who can pay the most money. I mean, just touching on, you know, showboat and that kind of stuff, you've always, you know, stuck to your roots. Daphne's been there. Yeah. You know, your dad, I love my dad. Like, you know, I've had opportunities in the past where you said, Sam, let's go get a beer. My dad stood out there with you, with a crew. You know, how these events work at SEMA, if there's one or two of you, it's fine. Freeze a crowd, man. When my dad stood there with a, with a group of guys, although I want to go and have a drink with this legend, family first. You, family you know how first. it is. And taking a step back. This kind of opportunity happens. You can sit down and have a proper beer when it's meant to be, man. But Absolutely. Family's always first. Uh, and, uh, you know, in this industry, I think that that's one of the things that Gas Monkey's done the best is is proven that it's about family. It's about your friends. It's about, you know, your, uh, your group and having a good time. That's what this show was all about. You know, there were so many different groups, but they were all having so, many, so much fun with everybody. But it's amazing how, like... You have touched so many people around the world, not physically, but like in, in such a... Well, an, you know, I was single for a while. <laughs> <laughs> but Richard, right, seven years ago, I came and sat down at your desk. You got a fucking Invicta watch for free. No questions asked. We hung out. We got to know each other. Seven years on, we're, you know, we're good pals. Absolutely. But the truth of the matter is, you need to understand what you're doing is changing lives and what you're doing now with the YouTube guys. You need to go check Gotta out Gas it. Monkey. It's back to the roots, back to the originality and back to Richard as he was. I'm finally getting to have fun again. The chains are off the monkey. So, right, just one quick thing, because we touched on it yesterday. Right, we, we know who the biggest TV stars are in Europe, right? We got Clarks and May. And, who? Uh, <laughs> so, what, what do you think of those guys? I don't know them. I love that. I love that. There you go. Richard, don't know them. Simple. Maybe you need to reinvent yourself too, guys. <laughs> on that note, thanks right for being on, awesome, Sam. man. Hey, super good to see you, man. See you, see you man. Yeah. Can we happens. go drink a beer? Going to mention our sponsors, Avalon King. Avalon King Armor Shield 9 is arguably the best thing you can do to be nice to your car. It will protect your glass and paint from just about anything. Incredibly, just after the interview, Jeremy Clarkson's ex appeared. I'm Jeremy Clarkson's ex. Oh, okay. Who? <laughs> Are you joking? No. <laughs> I'm going to give you that because I'm now a woman's motoring editor. Okay, cool. But I was, you, you don't know Jeremy Clarkson? Are you no. that on camera? I don't know Are Jeremy Clarkson. No way. I'm not kidding. I don't know the guy. I've never met a guy Keep named saying Jeremy. that. Are you English or American? I'm English. So. Well, would he like to meet him? That's the question. Well, yeah. Why? What does he do? Is he a car guy? <laughs> I let them fill you in. We'll have more from the amazing Petro Hedonism live show coming soon on our Make or Break series, part of the Hard Up Garage channel. So follow us on social media where we can alert you about what you can see and what we're up to. We're on all major platforms. And before we go, as usual, it's time to give you my motor trade tip of the week. Okay guys, my tip of the day is something quite technical, okay? Um, by law, people cannot just turn bulbs off on vehicles. It's in the engine management light bulb, the airbag light bulb, that kind of stuff. Um, that is illegal. So when you turn the ignition on on a vehicle, so not the first click, but the second click, this will illuminate all the bulbs on the dashboard. And when all the bulbs are illuminated, you should be able to spot the most crucial ones like the engine light, the airbag light, the ABS, the traction control, all the stuff which is safety related. Basically, when you start the vehicle up, these bulbs will come on 
for a duration of three or four seconds and then go out, basically telling you that the car has done a check and all those systems are okay. If there's one of these lights on, it could be something cheap to fix or it could be something very expensive. Guys, check all those lights. Remember, make sure the car is not turned on, it's not running. Second click, check the lights, start her up, do they go out, brilliant. Time for make or break to take a break. See you on Wednesday for regular episodes, but we might be releasing more snippets on other days throughout the week, so keep an eye on our social media for updates about that. Goodbye for now.